Well, <clears throat> we are here in a place that we've been before. It's nothing new. I don't. You don't have to be an economist to see where we are. We've been here before. Y'all don't remember? We've been here before. If you've been living under a rock, then you don't know what we're talking about. Recession, yeah, it's imminent. It is coming. Whether we do for one or whether we're not, it's happening. Why? Because of the government. It's always about that government, though. Some about them. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about the government, but I want to talk about y'all, you, who, you who are the you believers out there, and find out. Uh, how prepared are you and how long are you going to continue to use the excuse that you ain't got? Because <laughs> I want to bring up something very important uh, to you all. And it has a lot to do with what's inside of you, you see. Because when the economy acts the way it does, there's something, something inside so strong. I know I can make it. Something like that. Yeah, that right there. Let's talk about it. See in 60. Get you thinking, and where the topics are hot, feel free to comment whether we agree or not. Cause he's got something to say, Sir Walter Jones. Sir Walter Jones, he's got something to say, Sir Walter Jones. Sir Walter Jones, Jones. Come on in. The water's fine. Do 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 do. Who are? Hello, by the soul, the soul of the Jones Show. I'm here. It is the evening edition. <laughs> Baby, come on in. The water's fine. Water's fine. Good to see all y'all. Ain't seen y'all in a while. Y'all been all right? Hmm. Where you been since it's been gone? Huh? Since you've been gone, huh? What what, what were y'all doing? Tell me about it. Tell me about it. Tell me that you love. I want to talk to y'all about um, money, 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 and uh, you got your you got your stuff together because it looks like what the economy is doing is dropping like uh, hotcakes in, in Papa's hands. Ah, that's what's going on. And if your money was in the market, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. See, we who are patient don't worry about none of this stuff. No, we don't, we don't, we, we don't, we don't, we don't worry about that stuff. So you who are believers shouldn't be worrying either uh, because uh, some of you are worrying due to your not having hope. <laughs> April said, upbeat. Yeah, I'm up because I'm hungry, beat. I had nothing to eat yet. All right? <laughs> so don't, don't let this fool you. I'm hungry. Okay. I'm going to ask y'all a serious question, all right? I want to I wanna find out from y'all. My opening, I talk about there's something inside so strong. And that inside person I'm talking about is the person of the Holy Spirit. Okay, you got that? All right, now. If indeed, Michelle Hunter, the Holy Spirit is living inside of you, how in the world... Could you constantly, over and over again, be making the most horrible of financial decisions? Hmm? Hmm? Isn't not the Spirit supposed to dwell with you and show you all truths? Hmm? You, did you just think that was just on spiritual matters? Huh? And how equipped was Jesus Christ when it came to the the economy of that time during the, the Romans and the, the, the Sanhedrin? That was a political body, the Sanhedrin, the, 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 the Sadducees and the Pharisees and, that, 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 and, and the Roman Empire and, and uh, 
the, the emperors and the kings. That, that was the economy of that time. So he understood what was going on financially. He understood the economy. Politically, he understood. How is it that you all don't understand it? Hmm? Are you literally grieving the Holy Spirit when he tell you, don't buy that house. Don't buy that car. If you're going to buy that, make this deal. Get your credit report up so you don't have to pay a 25% interest rate. Hmm? Are you trying to tell me that the Holy Spirit ain't got no dealings with that? Hmm? Why do you always call the Holy Spirit, though, whenever you got an issue, though, to solve all these other issues, but then you don't allow the Holy Spirit to tell you what to spend, what not to spend, how to save, how to invest. Jesus made the parables of the talents. And this parable, and we're reading the King James, I think it was, which, which version? It talked about the market. He, he gave the talents, that's monte, to the three. The two took that money, and the scripture says they invested it into the market. The stock market been around for ages of time, ages and ages of time. You are scared of it. You are afraid of the market because you were taught in the church to give a tithe and an offering, and then something was going to happen from the sky. He's going to pull out a blessing that you have no room to receive. You've been hearing that all your life, and you're still hiding your car. Somebody lying to me and your grandkids. There's a liar on the line. Good to see you, Tree Brains. There's a liar on the line. That's Johnson. Blessing to you. Perfectly. Good to see y'all. How is it possible that all these generations of believers are still fighting in a cesspool of poverty when you were supposed to be the light of the world. The world's supposed to come to you whenever the market crash, whenever your crypto crash, whenever the, the 401k ain't act, acting right. You know what? Let, 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 let's go in here and see if we can pull up. Pull up uh, is this thing going to work? Let me, let, me, let me go to the whiteboard, okay? Because this makes no sense to me whatsoever. I'll never understand you people. All right? The, the saint's supposed to know what an index fund is. You're supposed to know. If you don't know, something's wrong. There's something wrong. I'm not saying y'all got to be financial advisors. Absolutely not. But how is it possible that the book that y'all reading... Uh, uh, Jews, all Jews, the Jews, okay? And those people were well off and they still are well off. You're supposed to know what an IRA is or or a, at least a Roth, okay? You ain't got to so much have all your money in it. You're supposed to know what a mutual fund is. You, you, you are part of mutual funds and you don't even realize that you are. You're supposed to know what stocks. These are all products that y'all should have some dealings with uh, bonds, uh, sto uh, stocks, and, and whether you receive your money do, do through dividends, okay? But all you've been hearing about is cryptocurrency or maybe, what, uh, blockchain, and you still don't know what that is. Everybody want to get a piece of the Bitcoin. Okay, but do you know what it is? Huh? Or what about Ethereum? Do you know what that is? Hmm? You hear about it and you see everybody making money, losing money, making money, losing money, yet you stay in a bubble and you are just like the poor who sit back and watch the markets do what it do and you sit back and point your finger. Meanwhile, you are sleeping in your mother's basement. How long are you going to be purposely in the dark? Hmm? 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 Hey, Marlene, good to see you. <laughs> I've been away. I've been away. Huh? I don't understand that. So... Jamal says, never invest in something you don't understand. Absolutely correct. 
the saints are not in none of this. None of it. <laughs> Absolutely none of it. And you won't even Google search it. You won't even search it out. And your neighbors are doing just fine. Because you're looking at dips and falls and, and you're looking at a bear market and you're saying, see, I don't want a part of that. But yet, 40 years from now, you're going to be still living in your mama's, your mama dad. <laughs> now you own the basement <laughs> and you got to get out of there because the owner is getting ready to sell the place. <laughs> excuses, excuses, excuses. I don't understand that. I love my Bitcoin, all right? This this Bitcoin. Now, I did this on the show the other day, <laughs> all right? And somebody was like, hey, Brother Jones, how can I get one of them Bitcoins, <laughs> okay? And then I pulled out my Ethereum 2.0, and the folks were like, ooh, can we go to eBay and get us some Ethereum so, <laughs> so we can? That's the Ethereum, by the way. How, how can I get the now? I'm going to talk about gold in a minute, hey, no, that that gold right there. We'll talk about that in a minute. How can I get a Bitcoin and an Ethereum so that I can go to the bank and put these in the lockbox? And when they said that, I realized we got a bigger problem than I thought. <laughs> we got a bigger problem than I thought. Go ahead and take that down to the bank, we please. They will laugh you to scorn. <laughs> Just my people, you you perish. Why you perish? Can you tell me? Can you put that in the comment section? Why you perish? So, this show is how can Christians survive in a failing economy? Y'all, it is the government that's doing this to you. And you're sitting back and letting the government do it to you. <laughs> I just don't understand. All right, so why are you broke? Okay, let's first of all figure out why you're broke. All right. First of all, let's figure out why you broke. And then maybe we can figure out. All right. Number one, you broke because you are not making enough money on your job. You understand? So you may need to do something, uh, a side hustle. Okay. Some of y'all like, I can't do it. I'm not, I don't have enough time. Yeah. That is your number one excuse. I wanted a car. I went down there and bought me a car knowing I, I could barely afford it, but I took that car and I signed up for Uber and Lyft and DoorDash and I started to drive that car around town every day, all day long, picking up all kind of folks so that Uber could pay my car note until I got it to a place where I could manage it. Y'all understand what I'm saying? That was my side hustle. So I bought not an asset, the car's a liability because as soon as I drove it off the lot, it went beep down in value. But I, I started to drive it and make a several hundred dollars a, uh, uh, a, a, over a couple of days and then take that money and took it and sent it back to the car company and paid that car down. I, t I paid it down far. You got to know how to hustle. You got to know how to hustle. Yes, come on. You, you say you do DoorDash and Instacart. Come on, y'all. Don't be ashamed of the, of the side hustle. That's how many people became rich and, and wealthy, what have you, because they went without. You understand? You can't get wealthy on your job. They went without. They suffered for years. They put stuff away. They did side hustles and put that away and invested that play money. You understand? Paid off their debts with that side money. I don't think y'all understand that. But you, you're too proud. Ain't too proud to beg. Number two, you aren't saving enough. You don't even have a coin job. And when you get your money, you always pay yourself first. Always pay yourself first. First, you can't pay nothing else until you pay yourself first. You better hear me. I always pay myself first. Everything that comes into my presence, I peel off a little bit for Sir Walter D. Jones Sr. And that goes into my coffers pocket, my account, 
my little thingy over there that I stash. Always. I'll always have, even when I tell y'all I'm broke. I'm broke in front of y'all, but I got a place. My mama taught me this one. Man, my mama, we, my mama, my mama taught me well. Ma, I need, no, we ain't got Ma, Ma, I didn't, no, we ain't got I ain't got it. No, I ain't got it. I ain't got it. <laughs> but everything my father was was given to her for whatever, she put a little bit away for herself, and then she'd buy some diapers and some uh, some formula and, and all kind of stuff for us and, and buy some shoes and socks for us. and she, But she, my mama always put a little bit away, put a little bit away. My mama, I, I ain't got it. We, we ain't got it. We, we broke. We broke. We ain't got nothing. She was always stashing them away. And I didn't realize that she was putting stuff away until one day a, a catastrophe happened. Well, daddy didn't even have anything. I can't remember what it was. Lights got shut off. I can't remember. Well, my I like didn't you get shit. We, my, my dad didn't play that lights off, gas off. My, my dad my daddy never played that, them games. So it was something. And my father didn't have the money. And my mama <laughs> went over there to that private little stash. Shh. And she pulled out a wad. Baby, <laughs> how much do you need? Hmm? Hmm? Huh, baby? It, my father like, where that come from? Like, Don't worry about it. <laughs> I got you, baby. I got you. I'm trying to tell y'all, this is a wise woman always put a little something down there in the breast department. The greatest bank account ever. All right? You ain't saving enough. Number three, you have too much liability. You got too much liability. Too much. You got you got cars. You got clothes. Okay, you got jewelry. You got all kind of stuff. You don't need that stuff. Get you a nice 10-speed bicycle. You don't work that far. You don't need that new car. Take the bicycle to work, man, or take the bus. I'm trying to tell you when I live on the west side of Chicago and the white folks started moving into our neighborhood, they wasn't driving cars. They was walking, taking buses, and, and every now and then an Uber or what have you. And they was, you know, because they they was putting that money away. And now I look at them, and they are doing so well off. They can go to any car lot right now, any minute. It doesn't matter if the car the cars cost this much now. It doesn't matter if the gas costs this much now. That, that doesn't matter. For years, they was putting that money away, putting that money away, and walking everywhere. But you all got to get in your car and drive two blocks to go to the store to get some gum. Makes no sense. It makes no sense. You in the mentality of poverty. Number four reason why you are broke. You have too much house. You got too much house. You are house pole. You are upside down. You didn't need the house. Did you not learn a lesson from 2008? You didn't learn no lesson. You wanted it. You make it more on your job right now. So you was able to have a down payment on the house. Okay, no problem. And you just barely got by because your credit report was around, what, $5.99. Okay, okay. But they, they say, okay, you can have the house. Knowing good and well, you could barely make the, the payments every month. And you forgot that you got to pay for the extra stuff. The garbage pick up and, and then the taxes come around. If you to put the taxes in your mortgage, the taxes come around and then tax time come. You doing a GoFundMe for your for your tax. You got too much house. And it's only you and your dog, Harold. It's your dog, Harold. Too much house. For what? I just don't understand you people. <laughs> What'd you say? I bought a house that uh, I could pay for without my wife. All right, Alfred, come on, Alfred. All right, and number five, the reason why you broke is because of FOMO. Can somebody tell me FOMO? You FOMOs tell me what that is? Hmm, hmm. This is one of the biggest problems with African Americans. You got to have the latest fad. You always feel like you are missing out on something. Always. You're missing out. So you go and buy the latest iPhone 
for twelve hundred dollars because you want to be hip like everybody else. You are ridiculous, and you gonna miss out. All right, you gonna miss out. Trust me. All right. So it's important that you 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 take a deep breath, look at what's going to happen to you 20 and 30 years from now and say to yourself, am I going to survive? Well, the answer is no. <laughs> no, you not the way you spend money. You ain't going to survive this. So we've got to talk about the difference between money and what's called currency. Not the currency exchange up the street. There is a difference between the two. All right? So for currency, it is a misnomer. It is something that we think it's money, but it ain't. Yes, currency is portable. I can take uh, this crypto and I can, uh, let's act like it's gold or it's a dollar. It's portable and it's durable, okay? Uh, currency is also divisible i could divide it because uh i can make change with uh this dollar uh currency is what's called fungible it's fungible that means interchangeable a dollar in my pocket buys the same amount as in your pocket that's what currency is it's portable it's durable divisible fungible currency great but there's a problem with what America did with this so-called currency. Because the difference, uh, there is this currency and then there is, okay, why am I thinking doing this? Why is it, why is it doing this? And then there's money. You're like, isn't it the same thing? No, it is not the same thing. Okay, it is not. Money is all of the above. Portable, durable, divisible, and fungible. It's everything. Plus. It's everything. Plus. You understand? It is a store of value. You understand? Over a long period of time. That's what money is. Now, this is very important because this is where God is speaking to you. So what would that be? That would be gold and silver and all kind of precious commodities. And that money is in limited. Uh, it's limited. It's in a limited state and limited in supply. And the government can cannot print it. It is unprintable, <laughs> okay? Gold and silver. The government don't like gold because there's a restraint on it and they can't really do anything with it because they can't produce it. They can't put it in that fiat machine and, and you know, turn it out. But this is God's money here. This is God's money. He even brought it up in Genesis chapter 2 and 11. He talked about the rivers that's going through Eden. And he says, and gold is there. <laughs> he brought it up in Genesis chapter 13 and 2 with Abram was rich in cattle and what? Gold. This is God's invention right here. This is man's invention right here. Fiat. Fiat. And what they do is they debase the fiat. It's magical. It's magically delicious. Prior to 1965, U.S. dimes uh, coinage contained 90% silver. Did y'all not know that? At one time, money, a dime, a dime, y'all, contained 90% silver. That's a current melt value of $2.10. 10 cents. 
today. That's a lot. That's real money. President Lyndon Bain Johnson said that silver is is uh, much too valuable to be money. So they started printing these these substitutes, which were then it became ninety one percent copper, copper base, y'all copper base and about 8% nickel y'all know what nickel is right nickel base so to do- today's coin has a current melt value not of $2.10 today's coin now is worth 0.02 cents it's not real money anymore. Why? The government did what's called debasement. And they did that to survive. Why? Because of major spendings. The conservatives got it right. I'm a conservative. The Republicans got it right. Government stepped in and screwed it all up. <laughs> So what they're doing is they're making the money, the coins, your nickels and your dimes and your quarters look like gold. They're making it look like gold and silver for your eyes, but they have no value. Your nickel, your dimes and your quarter, this is what it's worth right now. No value. None. Are y'all understanding what the word is coming out of my mouth? So they came up with this thing called fiat, fiat, all right? What is fiat? Fiat is a Latin word, an authoritative order or an artificial decree or an official decree. It's artificial and it's official. It's worthless. It's worthless paper is what fiat is but when the fed chairman from ben bernanke the janet yelling to whoever it is today goes into a special meeting uh and uh and they have their little their little rah 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 at the federal open market committee that they do their meetings it suddenly becomes currency you understand y'all call it money it's not money it's currency it's currency every country on the planet now uses fiat every one backed by what nothing zero fiat is backed by a promise who made the promise the government Do you trust the government? You do not. Because the government who made the promise to back it, backs it with just words. But at one time, the the dollar was backed by what? You guessed it, gold. Gold. You can walk into a bank, give them a dollar bill, and they give you gold. You can walk to a bank, give them gold, and they give you a dollar. And, And all of the nation's came together at uh, that council, that little meeting they had at that Bretton Wood, and said the United States dollar will be the central monetary exchange rate of all the countries in the world. And they adopted the dollar bill. Why? Because it was backed by what? God's money. Gold. And then Richard Nixon, Tricky Ricky, in 1971, decided to remove the counter, the, 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 the portability, the convertibility of the dollar, remove it off of the gold standard. Y'all understand. He removed it temporarily supposed to, and we steal on it. And the dollar from 1971 have always been backed by nothing. Why? Because in history, every time a government took something that was precious, a commodity like gold or silver or coin, 
and then they decided to debase it, the Roman Empire would take, uh, they, would, they would chop the gold. They would clip the gold. Whenever you went to a government place, they would clip the gold, clip it, and then they would take the clippings and, and mix it with other little stuff like copper base and nickel base. Why? Because they needed to raise more money uh, for government works, public works, and war. War. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing like this right here. Nothing is worth nothing. All right, so they, they did a debasement on the coins, which jacked up uh, the in inflation and then came hyperinflation. We are the new Roman Empire. The United States is the new Roman Empire. We've been going down that road a long time. I'm trying to help y'all out here. Y'all want to listen to me. So whatever happened to free market, free market, y'all, free market. Mm. Uh, Laissez-faire, I think the word is. What is free market? And, and, um, an economic system is what free market is, in which prices are determined by unrestricted competition unrestricted competition between privately owned businesses i should not be restricted i should be able to charge a reasonable price for my products and services without the government intervention that is what's called free market the free market is an economic system based on supply and demand with little or gov uh, or no government control Capitalism, free market capitalism. It is a summary, this description of, of all voluntary exchanges that take place in a given economic environment. Free market. That's what we was. We built our government on free market. That's what we did. So what happened? In Walk the History of Rome and Rome versus America, we have the same history, y'all. As soon as I learn how to do this, we have the same history. Rome started as a republic. They started as a republic because they overthrew they overthrew a what? They overthrew a monarchy. Rome. Does that sound familiar? Yes, it does. It sounds so familiar. What is the Republic? I'm going to get back to this, okay? Because I got a number two and I got a number three. All right, put a, put a, put a line right there. All right, sorry, y'all. I, I, I got rid of the line. <laughs> Come on back. All right. Rome started as a republic. All right. And so did we. Now, y'all say we are democracy. OK, we are a uh, democracy. But are we? We are not a democracy. All right. Democracy, the rule that is the rule of the uh, that that simply means the majority rule. That's what democracy is. All right. Uh Demos. Demos meaning people. Okay? That's what democracy is. Demos meaning people. And I think it's, uh, uh, what is that word, y'all? I think it's Crotean, Crotean or something like that. That means to rule. Okay? So, a democracy, majority rule. That means the people rule. Are we a democracy? No, the flaw, because there's a flaw to democracy. The flaw in democracy is that the majority cannot be restrained. If more than half can be persuaded, then they rule. In democracy, the lower class grows bigger and bigger, and then the poor become the winners. Then diversity becomes supreme. 
Now you like, what ain't that good? Mm, you you ain't thought you ain't thought that out. <laughs> you ain't really thought that out, did you? People are free to do whatever they want to do in a democracy. People can even break the law if they choose to do that in a democracy. This appears to be the very thing that makes up another system called anarchy. You understand? So you don't want democracy. And the word democracy do not appear in the Declaration of Independence of the Constitution. The founders did everything they could to keep democracy out of the paper. So what is democracy? Democracy means that the mob can rule if they come together. Then comes anarchy. And then after that comes tyranny. I don't think y'all get that. And that tyranny happens under what we have right now, which is called an oligarchy. That's what America is, an oligarchy. This whole system took place over time. Where? In Rome. Rome was a republic to the republic for which it stands. Okay, well, what's republic? I'm glad you asked. A republic is a Latin word, which means it's res, meaning thing. And publica, meaning, obviously, public, okay? Or it's the law, the law. The government is limited by the law which levels or what it does is the law leaves the people what it leaves the people alone separation of church and state leave them alone the the romans built the republic rome became wealthy but the people forgot the essentials of freedom they forget that the the essence of freedom is the proper limitations of government allow them to be free but when government keeps getting bigger and bigger the bigger the freedom of the people recedes so y'all saying we are part of a republic in in the, in, in, in America ah, i don't know about all of that once the government creates subsidies and give y'all aids not, <laughs> you know what AIDS I'm talking about. The government is giving y'all aid and subsidies and stimulus checks and bailouts. The people began to do what? They began to rely on the government. You are now sucking the breasts of the government because they are giving you all of these things. Then you become entitled to it. The Republicans, if anything, they got this right. You become relying on the government for more and more and more. Therefore, the people traded their freedom for their security. So... What happened with Rome? Rome fell because they went from a republic to a democracy and ended up in anarchy, tyranny, and then oligarchy under the progression of who? You got it. His name was Caesar. And they rendered unto Caesar what was Caesar's. And when Trump was in office, we was on our way to Caesar. Because they said Obama was that too. And they used Hitler's name as well. Are y'all getting any of this? I'm giving y'all a history lesson on econ economics so you can understand how this, this stuff works. 
So Rome, like America, was a republic to the republic for which it stands one nation under God. So what did Rome do? Rome debased its money. Like I told y'all, they debased its currency, not money. Then what happened? They did it through deficit, deficit spending. For what? War. What is it good for? Absolutely nothing. And what happened? It caused inflation. Do y'all know what the war, the, the defense budget is for America? Somebody Google the defense budget for America and you'll see where we're headed, y'all. So what did America do? America, she then debased her money as well. But how did she debase her money? Here's how she debased her money. When you go to the store right now, you buy, you buy a bag of tater chips. If you bought that, bought that bag of tater chips in 1970, Jays or Lays or whoever, you bought a bag of tater chips for 25 cents and that bag was bulging. It was bulging, that is. The bag was bulging for 25 cents. And then the, the tater chip company decided, okay, let's, we're putting too many chips in there. So let's cut the cost. We're going to not change the ingredients. We'll give them the chips, but we got to pull them chips out of there. So now when you go to the store, the cookie bag, the chip bag, uh, the fruit bag, uh, the, the flour and the oatmeal uh, and the sugar, all now come in smaller contents. Why? What is that called? That's called debasing. Debasement. Mm. Y'all with me? Y'all better hear me. Y'all better hear me. I'm trying to teach y'all how this works. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. They don't teach you this in high school and grammar school and in college unless you're in college for uh, an economic class. Okay? All right, now, where am I? Where am I? So, what's happening now is, uh, let's bring her up. Let's see. Pelosi is proposing a bill allowing president, the president to make gasoline price hikes illegal. Gas right now is $5 in Chicago. It's $6 in California. It's high, y'all, high. So what's she doing? She's saying, put a cap on it. Put a cap on it. Okay, that sounds like a great idea, y'all. It sounds like a wonderful idea, actually. But there's a problem with putting a cap on that. It has everything to do with what I just wrote up here. What was it? It has everything to do with the problem with free market. Free market. Because Rome imploded for trying to fix the same problem that we are having today. Messing with the free market. You're like, but Ella Jones, the price is too high. They're price gouging. Okay, that may seem like the case, but here's the problem with the oil situation. You all are saying that they are price, how you spell that? I think it's called gouging, okay? But you don't understand. The government, are, you all are, are putting people in office who have no economic history of, of education, nowhere. No history. Of, of economy, of ec the, those in the Republican, the, not Republican, but those in Congress, on the Senate, the Senator side and the House of Representatives side, none of these people went to school for economics. The, the president, the vice president, the speaker of the House, nobody know much about it, so they got to go and find these, 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 these specialists on, on the economy, but they're not listening to them because... If you know history, you won't try and repeat the same history that got these people to fall into a ditch. Rome imploded for doing the same thing. Price gouging seemed to be the thing. But what happened was the history behind that is uh, right here. The edict of Diocletian. 
this dude right here was upset because they were people, com uh, the companies of those who had businesses were charging, he felt, were price gouging. So he wrote an edict, an edict of, of prices in a big book. Read up on it when you get a chance. In 301 AD, when you know the history of Rome, you won't repeat it because we're going down that same rabbit hole. This emperor with whom were associated uh, his three co-rulers uh, prom promulgated an edict which fixed for the whole Roman Empire maximum prices for commodities, freight rates, and wages. It goes on and on. And you had to charge what the book said for your car or for your house or, or for your services. And if you didn't charge that particular price, they beheaded you. It would be like, uh, what is that book value? The blue book value, pretty much. It would be like trying to sell your car and not following the, the, book, the blue book value. And if you charge someone a penny above the blue book value, the government will come to your house and kill you. That's what this was literally. So when you see, let's say, Chevron or... Uh, let's say BP, is that Amico? They changed the name. Let's say Shell. I don't know, maybe Conical, right? Let's say that these guys are charging all kind of prices, you know, both 50, $5 and 12 cents. I've seen it at $5 and, uh, and, uh, what? Uh, I seen it in my neighborhood for five dollars and twenty cents, and this guy is charging four dollars and ninety nine cents. Okay, these are what the prices are. Well, here's the thing, y'all. It's just like the movie theater. Uh, A AMC movie the movie theater plays movies, and the ticket price for the uh, for the movie is fifteen dollars to the consumer. But when you paid the $15, only $5 went to the theater. $10 went to the movie production company, y'all. It went to the movie. It's because the, 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 the movie production company had to pay Denzel Washington. The movie theater only got $5 from that ticket or less, sometimes, sometimes down to $3. So how do they make their money? They've got to hike up the price of the popcorn and the concession. That's why popcorn costs a hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. That's why popcorn costs a hundred dollars. They've got to make that money back. All right. So Chevron is owned by Chevron, but Pookie owns that Chevron shop on the corner of, of main street and fifth Avenue. This is a mod. Okay, this is this is Shalom. <laughs> okay, because y'all know Pookie don't own no gas station. <laughs> okay, so if if Chevron is charging four fifty, unfortunately Pookie is getting a dollar from that. Do you understand? Chevron is getting the bulk of that money. So in order for Pookie to make a living. He's got to raise the price to $5.12 or he can't survive. So what happened with the edict of prices in Rome is they, they said cap these prices, cap them, cap them. You can't go no higher than that. What did Pookie do? What did Ahmad do? What did Shalom do? They all closed the businesses down. They could not feed their families. Why? Because you're messing with free enterprise free market so they could not afford to keep their stuff going so what happened in my community before you knew it it became a gas desert a high spell desert is it 2s and it became a food desert <laughs> okay i don't know how to spell it 2s is one s i get that mixed up why because they moved out why because they couldn't afford it and 
the gas is four dollars and fifty cents because there is a sales tax on top of that. There's a gas tax on top of that, and and where does the tax the the tax on that go? It goes to the workers. Who Nancy Pelosi <laughs> and those in Congress feed their families from the gas tax. So when you if if Pookie shuts down the gas station, then the taxes leave uh, the revenue tax leave what the community in which I live. And in walk the desert. It's a trickle down effect. And this is how Rome died. I don't think y'all getting it. Had a lot to do with the debasement of the currency. It's a it's a it's a long story, y'all. So what do you do? You've got to study this stuff and see what the government is doing so that you could be a hedge against this inflation and all these things that's happening. You need to have something stocked up in your house. And that is, you can do it in trading, um, investing, uh, and saving, whatever com uh, product that's out there. Get involved in the products. They are around, y'all. They're going to be around for a little while. Unfortunately, we all are kicking the can down the street. Your grandchildren are going to feel the pain of the can. So what I suggest you do is have a meeting with your children. Your children and your grandchildren, I do with mine all the time, because right now, 2022, we are kicking the can down the street. Come 2060, your children and grandchildren are going to feel the pain of what we did in 2022. So you got to prepare your children through that journey. To their retirement. You got to prepare them for it. There's nothing we can do. Other than doing something. Alright. So you want to start. Putting your money into some kind of investment plan. You know there's a there's a whole lot of. of uh, trading platforms that you could do your research on. For beginners you got. Uh, I don't uh, F Fidelity is one. It's one of my favorite. Fidelity is good for, for beginners. A TD, you see their commercials and y'all ignore it all the time. And these commercials don't play on BET. They don't play on the stations that you watch because they know you folks don't, you ain't interested in this stuff. Popeyes play on those stations. And McDonald's and Burger King and, and maybe iPhone and stuff like that. But Fidelity don't run commercials on, on these stations that y'all watch. TD Ameritrade and... Uh, E-Trade, okay? Get involved in these things. I would say Merrill Lynch, uh, Merrill, or they call it Merrill Edge for beginners, okay? You would hear about Weeble, okay? Weeble. Uh, I think this is one of the best investor. Uh, uh, I like Weeble because of their, their community, all right? Weeble have a wonderful community. Start investing, but finding out which one of these you can use, okay? They are uh, your your personal advisors, okay? Even though you may not even talk to anybody. Digitally, get involved. I personally personally like uh, uh, Vanguard, okay? Vanguard and Fidelity for more advanced, all right? And then what do you do with that? Start looking into what they call ETFs. Okay, ETFs or index funds. All right, index funds. Get involved. This is the safest route right now. I'm not telling y'all to buy Bitcoin right now. You best believe Bitcoin, Bitcoin going to be the way. I'll talk about that in a minute. The S&P 500. Don't just look at when, uh, the, the TV and watch the 5 o'clock news, 10 o'clock news, and you see that the stock did this, stock did that, and you hear about the S&P 500, and you don't do a Google search and find out what it is. Stop being lazy, you Christians who got the Holy Ghost in you. The Spirit is speaking to you. <laughs> He's speaking. So the S&P 500, get involved into some, because it's less risky. 
all right? If you want to invest anything, it's less risky. It's good business fundamentals. The S&P 500 gets you some ETFs. You understand what I'm saying? The stock ticker, one stock ticker, you'll see VOO or SPY. Why? Because it's less risky. You are investing in the 500 popular co companies around the country. Or you could do maybe uh, a little more risky. That do You can invest in the total stock market of ETFs. The total stock market, y'all. And you can Google VTI. That's Vanguard. That's 4,000 companies that you can have an ownership in. Just do it. Don't wait till you got 10,000, 20,000, 50,000. Put some money in it and get your get uh, used to uh, pulling the level, <laughs> okay? But one thing you cannot do, you cannot predict the market. You cannot time the market. Sometimes you got to turn the TV off. Put the money in there and leave it like you do a cake. Put it in there and leave it until you hear the alarm go off. Ding! And it's ready. Leave it. The problem is when you guys are timing the market, you are, you are buying too early. Or you are selling too early. Because you're sitting down there uh, uh grinding your fingernails trying to figure out oh, no I'm losing I'm losing I need to get in I need to get in I need to get out I need to get out no that's why I say go into some index funds and ETFs do what's called a dollar average a, a do a dollar cost average so that you won't be losing so much pick a schedule I put money in once a week a dollar cost average and I tell I tell, tell Vanguard to do it for me just put it in there. I don't care what the market is doing. It's it's all right. If it dips, fine. But it's going to what goes down going to come up when it comes to the S and P five hundred. One may lose, and this company may lose and go bankrupt. That's fine. I got four hundred and ninety five more companies that I own. <laughs> buy the whole bushel. Don't just buy one leaf. Mm -hmm. Invest pot uh, passively. All right. Invest passively and i would say uh m1 finance is a great start all right google that we please mm -hmm. google that all right so again gold may be doing some funny stuff right now but everybody eventually before the world end will have to go back to gold they have to go back to gold so you may not have physical gold, but you can get uh, paper paper assets. All right, you can Google this right here. I A U. It tracks the gold spot price. So if you may not be, have physical gold in your in your presence, but at least get some paper asset. Do something. Don't just sit there and worry. Be a worry bot. Mm hmm. Gold. It's still valuable. Why? The longer something's been around like gold, the longer it will be around because scarcity. It's all about scarcity, limited supply, and it's trustworthy. Gold, you can trust it. You can trust it. Now, value is subjective. Something is only worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. Y'all write that down if you can. I know it was long. Something is only worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. In walk NFTs is worth what somebody is willing to pay. And that could be at a short period of time. Mm. 
J.P. Morgan said, he said, gold is money and everything else is credit. Gold is money, but everything else is credit. He said that in 1912, J.P. Morgan. Fiat is only credit. All right, it's only credit. And it used to be against gold. It used to lean against gold. Mm -hmm. But now, believe it or not, Bitcoin. I can't spell. Bitcoin is now as good as gold. For now. For now. But now, because gold, gold is not an investment. You're like, what? It's not? No. Gold is an insurance. It's an insurance policy. Mm-hmm. Your policy, if you have a life insurance, your policy is against your life. So gold is a policy against what? Can somebody put it in the comment section? <laughs> hmm? Can somebody tell me? i like to know. What is it? Hmm? Anybody? Gold is rooted from the past. Mm-hmm. Yep. I need a few angles to sweep me. Gold <laughs> come some angels on me. Huh? What is gold? It's an insurance policy against what? Hmm? I like to know. Somebody tell me. Tell me what you know. Hmm? I'm waiting. Cause I don't see no comments coming in. Can somebody tell me? Hmm? Peggy said natural. Mm. Hmm. Brenda said the N NFT bubble already popped. <laughs> it sure did. <laughs> okay. Still waiting. I'm not gonna answer all this. Is, this is this is the pop quiz. Cause central banks are buying gold, y'all. Central banks are buying gold. With, with what, what, however, <laughs> however, they buying it. China is too. They buying gold like crazy. Mm -hmm. There you go, Brown. It's a hedge against inflation. Inflation. Okay. Gold is a hedge against inflation and so is Bitcoin. It's a hedge against inflation. <clears throat> Can somebody tell me what the what is the inflation rate right now? Hmm? What is inflation right now? So so for those of you who have been putting money away in your your uh, chest and under the mattress and in a wall, what have you, your money is losing value every year. You put a thousand dollars a year last year, your money is not worth a thousand dollars this year. It keeps losing value because your money is supposed to make money for you. Do you understand? So when you buy gold, when inflation goes up, guess what happened to the value of gold? Notice the gold price whenever inflation fluctuates. All right, Ruth said. 8.6. That's what Ruth said. Do y'all agree with it? That's what she said. 8.6. Nathan said 8.1. That is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But if you had your money in an index fund on ETF, you could be you could get 10%. I've seen it 15% and up. 
at least it's it's chomping on some of that inflation. But if you if your thousand dollars is sitting in the wall at home, you've lost eight point six on that on that thousand dollars. At least in uh, in the market, you could go up fifteen percent, a thousand dollars times fifteen percent, minus the eight point six percent inflationary rate. You could do pretty good. Now that may seem like a low amount, but if you keep doing this over time, and it goes all the way to the beginning of this show, what did I tell y'all? You broke because, because, because. Come out of the broke line. Mm-hmm. Come out of the broke line. So let me tell y'all, Bitcoin is hovering around at the time of this recording. I, I don't know what is it, twenty nine thousand. It may drop. I don't care. I don't care if Bitcoin drop. That means it's for sale. I want it to drop. Will I lose value? Yes, I want it to drop. But because I have faith in what it's getting ready to do, Bitcoin is going, uh, some are estimating Bitcoin that's going to be worth $120,000 per coin. Eventually. Yet, it is extremely volatile. How you spell volatile? Is it with an E? <laughs> I don't know. Bitcoin is extremely volatile. Good. <laughs> I, I like to take, I like a little, a little volatility. I like it. But come four, five years from now, the people who took their money out of Bitcoin will be crying. They will be crying. All right, there it is. It's an A. That's supposed to be an A. Volatile. <laughs> Thank you, perfect. <laughs> All right. I mean, I know how to spell, but I sure know how to think. <laughs> I know how to think. All right. So let's go to the scriptures as we end this. Uh, so I can go eat something. Let's go to the scripture and turn with me to Ecclesiastes chapter two, because God's plan always working y'all Ecclesiastes chapter two, go down to the bottom here. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Here's what God is saying. There is nothing better for a man than that he should eat and drink and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. I don't worry about nothing. Don't you worry about a thing. This also I saw that it was from the hand of God. For who can eat or who else can hasten hereunto more than I can? 26 is where it gets good. For God giveth to a man that is good in his sight. What does God give to man? He gives to man wisdom and knowledge and joy. Contrast. But... To the sinner, he gives, look what he does to the sinner. He gives travail. He gives travail also to gather and to heap up that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity and vexation of spirit. Wait a minute. God is saying that he is giving to those of you who listen to the Holy Spirit. Those of you who are part of this kingdom of God. He says that he's going to give you wisdom and knowledge and joy and show you how to manage your money. 
You understand? And you are going to then reap the benefit of the sinner's spoil. The sinner's spoil because the wealth of the wicked then is what? Stored up for who? That good man. For the just. And this man got to give his stuff over to you. Travail, gather, and heap up. I don't think y'all getting any of this. Y'all ain't understanding this. Let's see if we can find it in another version. All right, let's find it in the NLT. Here's what NLT say. He say, God gives wisdom, knowledge, and joy to those who please him. But if a sinner becomes wealthy, God takes the wealth away and gives it to those who please him. What? Lord have mercy. That is just crazy. It's crazy that God would do such a thing because he's already given you the wisdom and the knowledge on what to do with your money. Lord have mercy. So I was looking at this thing. I typed in on Google seven reasons why Christians are broke. All right. And uh, did I? I think I typed. Yeah, yeah, I did. Because I remember seeing something like that. And I'm looking at these these things and most of them are saying the same ridiculous thing. I looked at who? Charisma magazine. All right. Look what Charisma magazine say. I think I saved it. Charisma magazine say right here. They say the Bible says we are to witness to be witnesses in all the earth. Right. I agree with a lot of things that they said here. Okay. A lot of things that they said here. Poverty, complacency. All right. The spirit of poverty has elements that a person does not need a spiritual gift to detect. For example, in, in, in the neighborhoods uh, where I grew up, it is common to live with roaches. Oh, he goes on and on. I get it. I agree. Some of y'all got a spirit of poverty on you. You just can't come out of this. Uh, out of it. You just can't come out of it. All right. But then. He talks about poverty and how it is raised up in us. And it is uh, where we live. We, we have a system, a, a, a generation of, of poverty stricken folks. And then the, you vote a particular party and then that party keeps you impoverished with its, its public works and its uh, subsidies and its checks that is given to you and, and all that stuff I talked about earlier. All right. Instead of you saying one day, OK, I'm going to only stay on this for so long so we can I can do my little side jobs and then I'm going to kick the uh, I'm going to kick the, the, the government out of my house and then I'm going to make my own money. Instead of doing that, generation after generation live off of public aid. And you go to the to the projects and you'll see six generations, seven generations in the same project on public aid. So they said financial curses. When I saw curses, I says, uh oh, I know exactly where they're getting ready to go now. I know where they're going. You're talking about the curse of Cain. All right. Then came the curse of Malachi. Here we go. Here we go. The curse Malachi. They had to bring that up. Many are plagued with curses because they do not honor God with their tithes and offerings. Here we go. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> and the problem, the, the problem with this is that it's you tithe payers that are crying, I got nothing. <laughs> I just, I just can't understand it. I went all up and down Google and Every one of these websites brought up the whole tithing fiasco. And I keep saying, but these tithe payers are the ones who are borrowing. <laughs> They're the ones. <laughs> I'll never understand this world to save my life. How can you be so intelligent? Mm -hmm. um, how can you be so intelligent. I see you email, Eleanor. Okay, somebody sent something to my church, and I haven't been to the church yet, so I'll get it when I get to church. Not this week, but next week, because I'm I'm in I'm in Connecticut this coming weekend. 
Um, how could you be so intelligent, have all these degrees, and the school of hard knocks and all these things, and still be pulled in to the lie of being cursed but not giving God his money. <laughs> When all around you, people are thriving, and these are saved, sanctified folks. Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, and that would have matter, burning fire, all that stuff. I can't understand it to save my life. And then you people go to these churches, go to these conventions, and you listen to a foolish man like this. God going to send you a financial Boaz. <laughs> this man has single-handedly raped and pillaged the church. That man single-handedly raped and pillaged single-handedly. And y'all fell for it. He said God gonna send, hold on. God gonna send you a financial Boaz. <laughs> Can y'all can 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 I ask y'all a question? What's a financial Boaz? Huh? Hmm? <laughs> Lizzie. <laughs> Lizzie. Lizzie, since you're here, let me ask you a question. Hmm? Hmm? What's a financial Boaz? Huh? Hmm? Can y'all tell me? Huh? Huh? <clears throat> I mean, Boaz was already financially well off. So what's a financial bo <laughs> That's like saying God's going to send you a rich Warren Buffett. <laughs> so I'm going to say, what? A rich but Wait, we didn't need to put it uh, an adjective in front of it. We already know he's rich. Just say God going to send you a Warren Buffett. God will send you a financial boy. Okay, so he going to send you a man. I, I just, I'm trying to crunch the numbers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brown said, we can't cuss on here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to crunch the numbers. And then he went out. <laughs> now watch, he planned it. He planned it because he made sure nothing was in the way. Let me show it to you again, just to torture you a little bit. God going to send you a financial... You see what he did? He knew what he was going to do. He knew the women were going to go wild. So he looked around and made sure he wasn't going to trip over a cord because, he, he, you know, he can't afford to break his leg. Or he'd have to sue the same pastor who brought him in here. So he looked around, make sure I gotta make sure I fall back under the anointing, under the anointment. <laughs> okay. And when I fall back, he told the guy behind him, now you fall. All right. When I fall, you fall. And then these <laughs> the offerings are gonna be high. So he had to check the flooring. God gonna send you a financial boaz. <laughs> He, he he had a tight suit on and he didn't want to tear. He didn't want to rip it in his groin area. So he knew to go back and look around again. He said, wait, oh, I think I forgot something. Hold on. So he went back real slow. Like, uh, what's that movie? <laughs> like The Matrix. He went back slow like The Matrix. He checked the ground. Now, God, hold on. God going God gonna to give y'all... <laughs> Move that out the way. Move that out the way. God gonna give y'all 
uh, a financial boy. Huh. All right, here we go. <laughs> I'm so tired of the church. I don't know what to do. I'm so tired of y'all. Y'all are the biggest frauds. The government is one big Ponzi scheme, and the church has become a Ponzi scheme. A, a Ponzi scheme. Y'all keep bringing these, these shysters in here to rape the church. And all these women now at home waiting, waiting by the phone. <laughs> all these women at home right now waiting. Just waiting on the phone to ring. <laughs> I don't think I can do this because I didn't plan to plan for this. All these women are sitting there waiting by the phone. <laughs> <laughs> now Lord, now Lord, the prophet said Boaz is coming in my life. I'm gonna just sit here and wait all of my appointed time without I thought I heard a ring, Lord. I I could have sworn I heard a ring. <laughs> she just <laughs> huh, huh, huh? Boaz, Boaz Hello? <laughs> Show ain't no my financial boy. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all. I'm so tired. One more time, please. God gonna send you a financial boaz. I don't know what it means. <laughs> I'm trying to. Somebody Google it for me. There's got to be a financial gold Boaz out there in Google Land. Could somebody please help me? I don't know what that is. Oh. <laughs> okay, y'all. I'm done. Those of you who've been giving in the super chat, thank you. I see you, brown, brown girl. And and those of you who've been giving. Uh, in the uh, cash app, thank you so much. And those of you who've been given for the single uh, women's fund that always continues and never stops, thank you. Uh, that all that money goes to them. All right, thank y'all so much. I gave y'all a free financial class today, free of charge. <laughs> so if you want to bless the So Walter Jones show, there it is right there. But you know you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to. I will do this regardless. Hoping that you got something. Took some notes. Rewind the show. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and share it with your friend, your family and friends. We please share the show. Hit the subscribe button. All right. It's about 150 of y'all right now over there. If you hit the thumbs up about another hundred of you, if you hit the thumbs up on YouTube, we'll be able to uh, YouTube will spread this uh, gospel out a little bit further. There's a whole lot of uh, financial shows out there. It's a whole bunch of them. And um, mines would just fall in the little, little hole in the back and wall. Some of those channels are getting a, a couple of millions. I, I don't, I'm not looking for any of that stuff. I'm happy with the couple thousand of, of family, friends that I have here, all right, who will eventually watch it eventually over the next few, few months, <laughs> okay? And if I can help just a small group of folks who are the underdogs, then my living shall not be in vain. Richard said, uh, Brentick said, play it one more time. Okay, Brentick. God going to send you a financial Boaz. I missed the guy in the choir. Hold on. There's a guy in the choir with the white shirt on. <laughs> Wait. God going to send you. A financial Boaz. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. God gonna send you a financial Boaz. <laughs> I, I didn't even see him. <laughs> oh, man. The whole choir, the whole tenor section was, woo! 
All right, y'all. <laughs> I love y'all. Ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Give my regards to Brian Song Carnality. <laughs> God, I thank you for your presence. I thank you for these people who are here. I hope they receive something that came out of this here office that they can use so they can invest into their homes and their families and their children and their posterity so that they could be prepared for any kind of dip. Whatever the economy is doing, we, we don't worry as those who have no hope. Thank you for giving us wisdom and knowledge and joy, oh God, that you said that you would give us so that um, our, our bags are filled our bank accounts becoming overflowing our homes and everything. We we don't have a need for much because you've given us the wisdom and we listen to the spirit that told us what to do with our monies. We're not just sitting up in church and letting somebody tell us what to put in the bag. But you absolutely teaching us and showing us what to do and how to manage and how to invest. And in return, you said that the sinner man don't even know why he's doing it, but he's writing us checks and giving us monies <laughs> and don't even know why he's doing it. God, I thank you for your word. It's sound, and I'm going to hold on to it for the rest of my life. Bless these people who are watching today so they can take it with them and be a blessing to their homes. I'm asking that you be a blessing and a healing agent for Brentick L. Richardson II and his beloved wife as their child go through these procedures. Heal that child. Brentick is my dear brother. He's my little brother and whom I love. Now that he, he's married, and I love her and I love their child. So they're my family. So I'm asking that you heal that child. Work in that room. The surgeon's hands, the nurses, that whole staff, visit that room and be amongst them. And let your spirit hover and stay in that atmosphere as the surgeons and the doctors and the nurses guide and know what to do so that we could hear the testimony and the praise report from the Richardson family on how God did it. Only you can do it. We ask this in your son Jesus' name. Thank God. Amen and amen. All right, y'all. Take care of yourselves and one another. I'll see y'all tomorrow before I get out of here. Tomorrow is Theology Thursday. We'll talk about something tomorrow to upset the folks. And then uh, I'm back in the sky. I'll be speaking at... Um, What's the name of the church? Uh, Walter Oliver, Bishop Walter Oliver. I'll be preaching for him s Sunday morning in New Haven, Connecticut. And then I will be speaking at Yale University for Dr. Comer. <clears throat> he is a professor there. Dr. James P. Comer wrote this book and they, are in, and they will be unveiling a portrait of him and I will be doing the closing remarks and and whatever else they need me to do. All right. And so what a blessing. Ebenezer. Thank, thank you. Vera is a faithful member there. Ebenezer Chapel. And uh, get a chance to see Vera. Get a chance to eat her food. <laughs> All right. And we will be back uh, in the middle of the week. <clears throat> back to our regular scheduled program. Okay. I love y'all. Take care of yourselves and one another. <clears throat> if you emailed me, I'll be looking at that tonight, as I always do, and uh, see what I can do to assist you in whatever else you need. Y'all know I love the bunkers. The bunkers keep me alive. Y'all put bacon on my table, and you uh, help me to keep the heat on or the air conditioning on so baby girl can either be cool or warm. <laughs> 
and so that my baby Amir can be fed as well. <clears throat> you all make it possible, you who are the bunkers. I'll never take it for granted. Thank y'all for being such a lover of the Lord and his work. Take care of yourselves and one another. One more time. God gonna send you a financial Boaz. <laughs> Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Sir Walter Jones Show. Goodbye.